benefits list would be, and this is going to sound almost silly, but on the, I, I changed my mind on the benefits of exercise being much greater than I ever envisioned. So you know, I would probably classify as a borderline exercise addict. So for me to say, I now actually think exercise is incredible and has all these benefits is sort of a, a funny statement, um, which is not to say that I didn't think it had benefits before, but I, I don't think I understood or appreciated metabolically. So if you just take one example, um, probably like four years ago, three years ago, um, I had one of our analysts do this exercise that took him about a year, which was with some direction around where to start, comb through all the literature on Alzheimer's disease and get a sense of what tools in the toolkit would be most beneficial to prevent it or reduce the risk of it and or delay it. And, you know, I mean, it was anything was, an, anything was on the table, what drug, what supplement, what this, what that. And he came back and said, and we had a framework. It was a very mechanistic framework. He came back and said, um, it's definitely exercise. And I was like, dude, that, I mean, that sounds like such a politically correct thing to say. Come back with like a real answer, please. Like that just sounds dumb. It's exercise. How could it be exercise? And of course, it, you know, he came back and made the case. And in the end, I believe that case, which is when you look at what exercise does from a vascular standpoint, from a growth factor standpoint, you know, the creation of BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, um, I really believe that, and again, you shouldn't take the view that you should only do one thing, but if you're, if you're really committed to brain health, um, you, you want to be exercising every day. What parameters are there on that exercise? When, when you say exercise, for instance, there are people that view running as cardio, but then you, in the case of resistance training, are obviously utilizing the vascular system in yeah. your heart. But how, how do you think about uh, type and dose? So the literature is not crystal clear on that, but if you loosely take three types of exercise, which is modest or low intensity, quote unquote, cardio, uh, high intensity cardio and strength training, if you took those as the three legs of the exercise stool, um, the good news is they all appear to increase BDNF. They all appear to have benefits, though to different degrees on vascular tone, circulation, et cetera. What I basically decided a couple of years ago, or maybe a year ago was, in the absence of better information, just having a portfolio approach to those in the context of the training for the Centenarian Olympics was the best of both worlds. So in other words, my training is programmed through the Centenarian Olympics, which requires that you have training, a very specific type of training in all three of those legs, coupled with the tabletop, which is stability. So you have these four pieces of training, stability, strength, aerobic, and anaerobic. And by doing these every day, or some combination of them every day, you also know that to at least to a first order approximation, you are getting the benefits of brain health. And then of course, I mean, while we're just on the topic, I think sleep and you know, periods of nutrient cycling and obviously the appropriate steps on nutrition. Nutrient cycling meaning fast and famine? Yeah, I think some period oh, of... Yeah, probably the same. Feast and famine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> That'd be a great name for a podcast about fasting. <laughs> <laughs> fast or famine. Uh, right, feast, feast or famine. But it's funny, like, you know, if you think about Silicon Valley right now, right, like everybody's so obsessed with this nootropic and that nootropic, but what I don't think people understand is correct nutrition, exercise, and sleep are far better nootropics than modafinil. I mean, modafinil, modafinil might be one of the most potent nootropics out there, but it's actually not that strong a nootropic. It's actually kind of a weak nootropic, actually, by the literature. It, it is pretty amazing how many narcoleptics are uh, Olympic-level sprinters, though. <laughs> they can prescribe modafinil. Anyway, prohibitional anti-narcolepsy drug. True story. <laughs> wow, eight of the ten top ten. Eight of the top ten are narcoleptics. Who would have thought? Uh, <laughs> that's, just really, that's how they get so much time to train. Back in the good old days. Uh, what are things, and I know...